Congressman David Schweikert, Congresswoman Debbie Lesko, to Jane and Jason Beck and all the men and women here at Tear Tactical. Fellow Americans from near and far, it is great to be back in the Grand Canyon State. It's a special joy to be here with the Marine Corps mom, the champion of military families. She even teaches art at a Christian school, and you just heard firsthand how blessed I am to be married for these 35 years to the wonderful Karen Pitts. Would you thank our second lady one more time? She's just doing an amazing job for her. Karen and I are excited to be in Arizona today. We're here for one reason and one reason only, and that is that Arizona and America need four more years of President Donald Trump. stationed at the Marine Corps base in Yuma, Arizona. Karen and I just uh, got back from a little stop in Salt Lake City, Utah. We had a little debate with Kamala Harris last night. Some, some people think we did all right. stage. I think last night's debate was not so much a debate between two candidates for vice president. It was a debate between two visions. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris want higher taxes, open borders, socialized medicine. They want to abolish fossil fuels, use taxpayer funding to pay for abortion all the way up to the moment of birth. If you didn't figure it out watching last night, I'll tip you off. They want to pack the Supreme Court and defund the police. President Donald Trump, we've rebuilt our military. We cut taxes. We rolled back regulations. We unleashed American energy. We secured our border, supported law enforcement, and we stood for life and liberties every single day. So when you compare President Trump has done these last three and a half years, I think there's no question about it. President Donald Trump won that debate hands down, and we're going to win again in 26 days when we re-elect President Donald Trump for four more years. of everyday Americans from every walk of life. Here in Arizona, you believe we could be strong again. You believe we could be prosperous again. You know, I heard that uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are both in Arizona today. I got a feeling it's because Arizona said yes to President Donald Trump in 2016. Arizona is going to say yes to four more years of President Donald Trump. It's because of what we've done and what we've accomplished together. Four years ago, we inherited a military that was hollowed out by devastating budget cuts. An economy struggling to break free of the slowest economic recovery since the Great Depression. Terrorism was on the rise. And we witnessed a steady assault on our most cherished values. But in just three short years, we rebuilt that military. We restored the arsenal of democracy. 
And we're finally giving our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guard the resources and the support that they deserve to accomplish their mission and defend our nation. You know, we're standing here just a short drive from Luke Air Force Base. Pride of the nation. And I'm proud to report that President Donald Trump has signed the largest investments in our national defense since the days of Ronald Reagan. So we've stood with those who serve, but we've also stood with all of you who've worn the uniform of the United States. You know, when Joe Biden was Vice President, America saw years of scandal at the VA that shocked the conscience of the nation. We all remember those days. Some of the worst abuses happened not far from here in Phoenix at the VA. The veterans were literally dying while waiting for the medical care that they need medical care that they earned in the uniform of the United States. But when President Trump came into office, that all changed. We passed the Veterans Accountability Act, the most sweeping reforms of the VA in 50 years. We fired thousands of VA workers for not giving our veterans the health care that they earned, and Veterans Choice is now available for every veteran in America. Now, I know this uh, close to that Air Force Base is probably more than a few of you that have served in uniform. So if you're able, would you mind standing up or raise your hand and let us thank you one more time for your service in this country. Thank you for your service. God bless you. So it's been about security. It's been about supporting our veterans. In our first three years, it was about restarting the engine of the American economy. You know, where Joe Biden wants to raise taxes, in our first three years, President Donald Trump cut taxes across the board for working families and businesses. We rolled back more federal red tape than any administration in history. We unleashed American energy, fought for free and fair trade, and in just three short years, businesses large and small created seven million good-paying jobs, including more than 250,000 jobs right here in Arizona. And wages were rising across the board. What meant the most to the President to me is wages were rising most rapidly for hard-working, blue-collar Americans. The forgotten men and women of America were forgotten no more. When Joe Biden was Vice President, and I may have brought this up last night. When Joe Biden was Vice President, America lost 200,000 manufacturing jobs. And the last president actually said those jobs were never coming back. Remember, four years ago, he said, and I quote, what magic wand do you have? Well, we didn't need a magic wand. We just needed President Donald Trump in the White House. 500,000 manufacturing jobs in just three years. I mean, you don't need to look any further than right here at Tier Tactical in Pure. I just heard backstage from Jason and Jane that it was because of President Trump's tax cuts that they were actually able to expand Tier Tactical expand the facility we're standing in right now. They're building another facility right in front that's going to create 80 more good-paying Arizona jobs. Can we give Jason and Jane a big round of applause? Thank you for growing in Peoria. So we stood for our national defense, our veterans, for jobs. And every day of this administration, President Donald Trump has stood for the rule of law. We've appointed more than 200 principled conservatives to our courts at every level, including two Supreme Court justices. And I will tell you, they are all men and women who will uphold all the God-given liberties in our Constitution, like the freedom of religion and the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms.
Last month, we paused as a nation to rightly honor the life and service of the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. When the memorials were over, President Donald Trump fulfilled his constitutional duty and nominated a principled, experienced, brilliant, conservative woman to the Supreme Court of the United States, Judge Amy Coney Barrett. I gotta be honest with you, I'm a big fan of Judge Barrett. And not just because she's from Indiana. Judge Barrett is exactly the kind of judge that President Trump promised the American people he would appoint, and that we've appointed all along the way. Judges who will interpret the law as written, who will not legislate from the bench, who will uphold the Constitution of the United States. That's why we need Judge Amy Coney Barrett to be Justice Amy Coney Barrett. And I'll promise you, after the Senate does their job of advice and consent, we're going to fill that seat. So we stood for the rule of law, strengthened the constitutional foundations of our republic. President Donald Trump has stood every single day with the men and women who serve on the thin blue line of law enforcement, and we always will. The President and I know what Jason just said. The men and women who serve in law enforcement across America are some of the best people in this country, and they deserve the respect of every American every single day. Would you join me in thanking all the members of law enforcement who are gathered with us? President Trump and I will always support the right of Americans to peaceful protest. Rioting and looting is not peaceful protest. Burning businesses is not free speech. Last night in Salt Lake City, I had with me a wonderful woman, an African-American business owner from Minneapolis. It's just a few days after the killing of George Floyd. And let me say again, there's no excuse for what happened to George Floyd, and justice will be served. Yeah. And in the days that followed, Flora Westbrook watched as the protesters, rioters, and looters moved closer and closer to a business that she had built in the largely African-American community 35 years ago, and they burned her to the ground. Men and women of Arizona, let me be clear. Violence against innocent civilians, the destruction of private property, and violence against law enforcement will not be tolerated, and those who do so will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. You know, for months all Joe Biden talked about were peaceful protests, right? While the American people literally watch businesses in their communities burn in our major cities. You know, the truth is, Joe Biden would double down on the very policies that have led to violence in America. When you, when you suggest that you will withdraw support from those who protect and serve, you embolden those who would harm our families. Now, Joe Biden justifies it by saying that America is, in his words, systemically racist. And he's actually said, and Kamala Harris repeated it last night, that police have an implicit bias against minorities in this country. When Joe Biden was asked if he'd support cutting funding for law enforcement, he replied, yes, absolutely. And his running mate has said that we need to reimagine law enforcement. And she recently applauded the mayor of Los Angeles's efforts to cut $150 million from LA's budget. Well, let me 
me make you a promise. Under President Donald Trump, we're not going to defund the police, not now, not ever. We're going to back the world. And here at this great company, that every single day not only employs people all across this region, but makes equipment for our heroes in law enforcement. I'm proud to report to you that under President Trump's leadership, we're providing more funding for law enforcement, more training, and more resources. And we're going to keep supporting law enforcement for four more years. Now, the President and I know we don't have to choose between supporting law enforcement and supporting our African-American families and other minorities in our major cities. The truth is we've supported law enforcement with all new resources, deployed personnel to cities struggling with violence. And all along the way in this administration, we saw the lowest unemployment ever recorded for African Americans, the highest investment in historically black colleges and universities. This president was a champion of educational choice for all of our families, and we passed prison justice reform. Yes, we can, we can support law enforcement and support more opportunities, better education, better public safety in our African American communities in our major cities. We have done both for the last three and a half years, and we're going to continue to do both for four more years in my life. It's an honor to be here, a family-owned business that literally is saving the lives of our men and women in law enforcement every day. Under this president's leadership, I'm told that they created more than 120 new Arizona jobs, and every year this company makes some 20,000 protective vests that are worn by law enforcement across America and American forces stationed all around the world. Could you, could you just give one more round of applause? President Donald Trump, I promise you, we're going to have law and order in every city in this country, for every American of every race and creed. So we rebuilt our military. We revived our economy. We stood for life, for our liberties and law and order. In just three short years, we made America great again. And none of those would have been possible with our, our incredible partners in Congress. Would you join me in thanking two of the most principled conservatives in Washington, D.C., people who have stood in the gap and stood by this president every step of the way, Congressman David Schweikert and Congresswoman Debbie Lesko. Congresswoman Debbie Lesko to a new Republican majority in the United States House of Representatives. We need to retire Nancy Pelosi once and for all. So we made incredible progress. It was a wonderful three years under this president's leadership. Promises made, promises kept. And then the coronavirus struck from China. But I'm here to report to you, before the first documented case of community transmission, President Trump's leadership shone for it. Before January was out, our president did what no American president had ever done in the history of this country. He suspended all travel from China, the second largest economy in the world. Now, 
Joe Biden. Joe Biden said that was xenophobic, hysterical. He said it was fear-mongering and wrote an essay in USA Today that said it would make things worse. But I want to tell you, as the head of the White House Coronavirus Task Force, President Trump's action suspending travel from China saved untold American lives and bought us time to stand up for the greatest national mobilization since World War II. We reinvented testing. Over 115 million tests done so far. We saw to the manufacturing delivery of literally billions of medical supplies to our amazing doctors and nurses and healthcare workers. We partnered with major research companies in this country. We developed medicines that are literally saving lives every day. And we are on track to have the first safe and effective coronavirus vaccine and tens of millions of doses before the end of this year. Let me say, on behalf of President Trump, how moved we have all been. The outpouring of concern and prayers for the President and the First Lady over this past week. I spoke to the President this morning, told him I was headed to Arizona, and I got to tell you, President Trump and First Lady Melania are doing just great, and he's going to be back on the road and in the fight before you know it. To the outpouring of concern for our first family, the President and I know is just emblematic of the love, and the care, and the wonderful medical treatment that every American family impacted by the coronavirus has had. Is incredible. So, would you join me in just taking a moment? Can we just say thank you to our doctors, our nurses, our first responders, and everyone who has kept America moving forward and healing us? Here in Arizona, after the outbreak this summer, all across America, we're going to Stay on it. Keep slowing the spread. Keep protecting the vulnerable. We're going to keep saving lives. And we're going to keep opening up America again. The truth is, because of the strong foundation this president poured in those first three years, because of the unprecedented support, direct payments to families, and a paycheck protection program that saved 50 million American jobs. The American economy is coming back stronger than ever before. We lost 22 million jobs in the height of this pandemic because of the support we provided. And I heard the Tier Tactical took advantage of that Paycheck Protection Program to keep people on the payroll. In the last five months alone, we've already seen more than 11 and a half million Americans go back to work, including 172,000 right here in the Grand Canyon State. And Arizona's unemployment rate is already cut in half. The Arizona and American comeback is underway. And let me just say, none of that would have been possible without the seamless partnership, strong and compassionate leadership of Governor Doug Ducey. Would you join me in thanking Governor Ducey for the strong job he's done putting the health of the people of Arizona first. We couldn't be more grateful. So we've gone through a time of testing. But I came here today because in 26 days, we're coming to a time for choosing. And the choice in this election has never been clear. Stakes have never been higher. I can tell you all know that. I mean, Joe Biden is, uh, Joe Biden actually wants to raise taxes by $4 trillion in the midst of a global pandemic. President Trump, we not only cut taxes in the last three and a half years, we're going to keep cutting middle class taxes for four more years.
President Donald Trump's already rolled back more federal red tape and unleashed the American economy as never before. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, they want to pass a $2 trillion version of the Green New Deal. They put us back in the Paris climate accord. Stifle American jobs and disadvantage American families. Joe Biden is for open borders, sanctuary cities, free lawyers and health care for illegal immigrants. I think you here in Arizona know what all of that has meant would mean. President Donald Trump, we made record investments in border security. Mexico is doing more to secure our border and theirs than ever before, and we've already built more than 300 miles of that border wall. And with four more years, we're going to build it all.
I've seen him up close. The cameras are off, but nobody's looking. And hand to my heart, I can tell you, there's never been a day gone by that President Donald Trump hasn't got up and fought to keep the promises that he made to the people of Arizona. Now it's our turn to fight for him. It's on, Arizona. Enthusiasm. Keep voicing your support. Talk to your neighbors and friends and worship and at work all across the Grand Canyon State. Say, I ran into Mike over at Peoria. And he talked for like 40 minutes out in the hot blazing sun. And just talked about what we've just begun to do for the American people. And how this president has led our nation through one of the greatest challenging years in my lifetime. So have you. I mean, go and tell the story, and when you do, I want you to have faith. Have faith in the people of this country. I mean, the truth is, I think a careful study of American history shows that every time the American people have been given a choice between more freedom and less freedom, they choose a future of more freedom every single time. So talk to your neighbors and friends and have faith. Just like they did before in 2016, they're going to choose American greatness again. And if you're inclined uh, to bow the head and bend the knee from time to time, I'd encourage you to exercise that other kind of faith too. Jason was talking about talking about that from this podium. He was talking about it with us backstage. You know, you turn on the television these days, and it's kind of like that little girl asked me a question in the debate last night. It seemed like on TV it looks like there's more that divides us in this country than unites us. And i got to tell you, I've traveled all across America in the last four years, and I can tell you, there will always be more that unites the people of the United States of America than will ever divide us. And chief among those things is faith. This is a nation of faith. So in the next 26 days, I'd encourage you to encourage you to pray for America. Pray for all the American people. When you pray, pray with confidence. If his people who are called by his name will humble themselves and pray, that he'll do like he's always done in the long and storied history of this great nation. He'll hear from heaven and he'll heal this land. This one is under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I just know with your continued support, with the energy that I see out here in the Arizona sun today, and every day between now and November 3rd, I'm going to make Arizona and America stronger than ever before. We're going to make Arizona and America safer than ever before. And with Congressman David Schweigert and Congresswoman Debbie Lesko in a new Republican majority and in the House of Representatives, and with President Donald Trump in the White House for four more years, and with God's help, we're going to make America great again. Again. Thank you all very much.